Hello, this is Max, working on a lunar base. An astronaut accidentally encounters their clone, after which they uncover the terrifying secret of their origin. Don't forget to subscribe. The story begins with a commercial from Lunar Industries, set in the late 21st century. Earth is grappling with an energy crisis as traditional fossil fuel reserves, such as coal, oil, and natural gas, are nearly depleted. To address this crisis, the world has turned to helium-3, a resource abundant on the moon. Lunar Industries has established Sparing Station, a facility on the moon's far side, to extract this alternative fuel source. The narrative then shifts to the Sering mining base on the lunar surface. This facility operates efficiently with high levels of automation, requiring only one human operator. This operator, Sam Bell, dons a spacesuit and ventures outside to operate a Land Rover and harvest Helium-3, which is then sent back to Earth. Sam is nearing the end of his three-year work contract, with just two weeks remaining before his return to Earth. Unfortunately, Sam faces persistent communication issues due to a malfunctioning satellite, leaving him with only sporadic recorded messages from his wife, Tess, who was pregnant with their daughter, Eve, when he departed. Sam's solitude is palpable as he often talks to himself, with his sole companion being an advanced AI robot named Judy. Judy assists with base operations and provides emotional support to Sam. In the following scene, as Judy gives Sam a haircut, he inquires about Sam's well-being, noting that he's observed some unusual behavior lately, likely stemming from loneliness and depression. Sam dismisses his concerns and instead asks about when the lunar satellite will be repaired so he can communicate with his family. Jerdy informs him that the company has placed a low priority on fixing the satellite. Despite having two weeks left in his contract, Sam believes the repair is essential because the next person taking his place will struggle without live communication with Earth. Additionally, Sam is experiencing more frequent headaches and requests medication from Jerdy. The next day, Sam receives a video message from his wife, Tess, which he eagerly plays. Tess acknowledges that she understands how lonely Sam must be on the moon's surface but expresses her pride in his work. She shows their daughter, Eve, in the video, lifting Sam's spirits. Before concluding the message, Tess conveys her love for him. We then witness Sam spending his free time engaging in various activities, including crafting a miniature replica of his hometown, tending to greenhouse plants, and watching old television programs. Later, while fetching a glass of hot water, Sam experiences a hallucination of a woman sitting in his chair. This distraction leads to him burning his hand on the hot water. Judy tends to his injured hand and inquires about the incident, but Sam chooses to conceal the truth pretending he was merely distracted while watching TV. The following morning, Sam wakes up and resumes his daily routine. While running on a treadmill, he experiences chest pains but doesn't pay much attention to them. After breakfast, Sam dons his spacesuit and heads out on the rover to extract more helium-3. While driving, Sam has another vision of the same woman, causing him to crash the rover into the harvester. Realizing the rapid loss of cabin air, he puts on his helmet but still loses consciousness. Some time later, Sam regains consciousness in the base infirmary with no memory of the accident. Jerdy has been monitoring his health and advises Sam to rest further. Eventually, Sam overhears Jerdy engaged in what appears to be a live conversation with Lunar Industries management. As a result, he attempts to make his way to the control room, only to discover that he's too weak to walk. Nonetheless, he persists and questions Jerdy about the identity of the individuals he's been talking to. In response to Sam's questioning, Jerdy insists that it's just recording a message. The next day, Sam wakes up feeling healthy and explores the base. Shortly after, he receives a message from Lunar Industries, informing him that they will send a rescue team to fix the harvester and bring him home. However, instead of waiting inside the moon base as instructed, Sam declares that he can repair the harvester himself. Jerdy, following strict orders, refuses to allow Sam to leave the base until the rescue team arrives. This refusal raises suspicions in Sam's mind, leading him to devise a plan to leave the base. He manipulates a vent, causing gas to spray out, making it appear as a serious issue. Using this ruse, he convinces Jerdy to grant him permission to exit. Following this, Sam enters another rover and travels to the site of the earlier rover crash. There, he opens the hatch and discovers a body that looks identical to himself. Upon closer examination, he is shocked to realize that the body is a clone of himself. Sam transports the clone back to the base and tends to its injuries. He turns to Jerdy, demanding answers about the clone's identity and the unfolding situation. 
To his astonishment, Jerdy reveals that the clone is also Sam Bell. A short while later, the injured Sam regains consciousness and finds the newly arrived Sam in the room. He attempts to engage with the new Sam, expressing gratitude for saving his life and offering a handshake, but the new Sam dismisses him. Subsequently, the two Sams become embroiled in a heated argument and a physical altercation, both grappling with the unsettling question of who is the real Sam and who is the clone. Later, the older Sam approaches Jerdy and directly questions whether he is truly a clone. Jerdy finally confirms that both Sams are indeed clones. He reveals that there was no actual crash when the new Sam awakened. It's a standard procedure for all new clones. Furthermore, after every three-year contract expires, a new Sam is awakened in the infirmary. The memories of Tess and Eve are merely implanted into the clone from the original Sam Bell. The older Sam is overwhelmed by this revelation and breaks down emotionally. Although Jerdy tries to offer comfort, he walks away in silence. With only 11 hours remaining until the rescue team's arrival, the new Sam apologizes to the old Sam for their earlier altercation. However, the older Sam responds by playing loud music to ignore him. The new Sam abruptly stops the music and shares a revelation. When he woke up, he overheard Jerdy having a live conversation with Lunar Industries. He points out that the communication satellite is not Chad, suggesting that Lunar Headquarters is intentionally blocking their signal from outside the moon base to prevent their contact with Earth. Subsequently, the two Sams suit up and drive the rovers outside to investigate the area. They split up to individually examine any unusual elements in their surroundings. Each Sam comes across different communication substations that have been interfering with the live feed from Earth. However, the older Sam's health deteriorates rapidly causing him to return to the base. He vomits blood inside his helmet and discovers that a tooth has fallen out. While the new Sam continues his investigation, the older Sam goes to the main computer of the base. He attempts to access his database and, with Jerdy's assistance, enters the correct credentials. This grants him access to archived recordings from previous clones, revealing a disturbing pattern. At the end of each contract, the clone becomes progressively ill and is eventually informed about entering cryogenic sleep before their return to Earth. Sensing something amiss, the older Sam goes to the cryogenic pod room and finds a hollow space under the floor. He begins cutting his way in. By the time the new Sam returns to the base, having found more towers outside the perimeter, the older Sam reveals the secret passageway leading to the basement area. Together, they descend into the basement and discover hundreds of hibernating clones. This revelation shocks them, making them realize that Lunar Industries is unethically using clones of the original Sam Bell to avoid the cost of training and transporting new astronauts. Additionally, Lunar Industries deliberately chants the live feed to prevent the clones from contacting Earth, and the clones, who believe they are entering hibernation at the end of their contract before their final return to Earth, are, in fact, incinerated. Following these revelations, the older Sam takes a mini-computer and drives outside in the rover. Once beyond the interference radius, he attempts to video call Tess on Earth. To his surprise, a young girl answers the call and informs him that Tess passed away years ago. The young girl introduces herself as Tess's daughter, revealing that Sam's daughter, Eve, is now 15 years old. When Eve calls out for her dad, who is presumably the original Sam Bell, the older Sam is overcome with panic and abruptly ends the call. This emotional shock leads him to break down, expressing his deep desire to go home. After he calms down, he returns to the base, displaying the same health deterioration symptoms as previous clones. Witnessing this, the new Sam ticks him into bed. In the next scene, both Sams realize that the incoming rescue team will kill them if they are found together. The new Sam persuades Jerdy to awaken another clone, with the intention of killing the awakened clone and placing it in the crashed rover. This will allow him to send the older Sam to Earth in one of the Helium-3 transporting containers. Meanwhile, the new Sam plans to act as if he knows nothing and has been inside the base the entire time. Later, the older Sam awakens and discovers an unconscious clone in the infirmary. When he inquires about the situation, the new Sam reveals his plan. The older Sam expresses reluctance to kill anyone and acknowledges that he doesn't have much time left to live. He suggests a modification to the plan. He should be placed back into the crashed rover to die, ensuring that Lunar Industries doesn't suspect anything. Meanwhile, he asks the new Sam to return to Earth, leaving the awakened clone in the moon base. With only a couple of hours remaining before the rescue team's arrival, the two Sams put on their suits and head out to the crashed rover to carry out their plan. They share a poignant moment, 
reminiscing about their memories and how they met Tess. Shortly thereafter, the older Sam falls asleep, and the new Sam gently carries him back to the crashed rover. With a heartfelt farewell, the two Sams part ways, and the new Sam heads back to the moon base, tears in his eyes. Back at the moon base, the new Sam makes preparations to leave in a Helium-3 container. During this time, Judy points out a critical issue. It has recorded everything from the moment it woke up in the infirmary, potentially exposing the interactions between the two clones and their plan to Lunar Industries. To avoid this risk, Judy advises the new Sam to erase his own memory before departing. The new Sam expresses gratitude and bids farewell to Jerdy before initiating the memory wipe. Minutes before the rescue team lands, the new Sam recalls something crucial. He rushes back to the control room and reprograms a harvester to crash into and destroy the jamming antenna, enabling live communications with Earth. Additionally, he takes a canister of Helium-3 to provide him with funds once he reaches Earth. Just moments before the rescue unit arrives, he enters the container and launches into space. The older Sam remains conscious long enough to witness the new Sam's departure. The rescue team is deceived upon finding both the newly awakened clone in the infirmary and the lifeless body of the older Sam inside the crashed rover. In the final scene, news reports describe how Sam's testimony regarding Lunar Industries and ethical activities has sparked a major controversy, resulting in a significant drop in their stock value. If you are interested in such films, please proceed to the next video on the screen and also share your thoughts about this film in the comments. Give us a like and subscribe. Goodbye.